kick off on any of that? Uh, well, OK, so I'll start with the last one. So democracy, I think, was... was it needs to, there, there, you know, it's how long is a piece of string, I suppose, and I don't want to go into lecture mode. But, you know, the, the reason why there was emancipation of the genders in, and, and proper suffrage in this country after the First World War was because we was through, because of suffering, because of so many people had been killed in the First World War and women had been seen to have had a good war by helping out in factories and, you know, not throwing bricks through windows like the front suffragettes had been doing uh, before 1914. So... At that point, we forget, I think, that Azerbaijan and Uzbekistan uh, allowed women to vote before we did in Britain. And um, so I think that there is, a, there is a sort of point at which we are able to be tolerant of each other's views and opinions when um, the garden is bursting with fruit. States and countries, regions, empires, doesn't matter whether it's a democratic system or not, where people are, are, uh, are worried, where they're fearful, uh, where they are scared about being able to feed their children and worried about the world getting uh, tougher and meaner, more difficult, tend to make bad decisions when it comes to voting. And uh, 1930s Germany, I think, is the most useful example of that. I suppose you might as well throw in Austria in the 1930s as well, where more than 90% voted for the Angelus. You know, where, where, where you have economic contraction, you find fear being bred, and fear is, is a highly emotional, you know, it's, it's, it's the strongest of all of our emotions because it, it makes us make those short-term decisions and it makes us uncharitable, ungenerous. So we, we've had 100 years, I think, despite the First and Second World War, of, of hope and optimism. And in terms of what is the future of a democracy, I think, with any luck, what we have learned is that the cost and the price of treating people uh, disgracefully is, is something which we need to... Um, to avoid, but you know, I think that in this, you know, looking at looking at Brexit in three weeks' time, about half the population are going to be unhappy. Whichever the problems that relate to our prosperity that we can't afford the luxury that, of a democratic solution to. Well, you know, I think it all depends. It all depends on what the what the aim of, what the purpose of the state is, and people lose confidence in the state when it doesn't tax correctly or when when it doesn't seem to improve the qualities of life. I think that the primary function of a state is to try to create a, uh, a meritocracy where the best rise to the top regardless of their backgrounds, incomes and so on, where ability counts for everything. And uh, we have a problem with that, I think, in this country, the way we're set up, particularly with our educational system. Um, but I think that the, that the role of a, of, of a state needs to be constantly trying to uh, narrow the gap between the top and the bottom. There are right. all sorts of ways which, you know... You, you know I just want to ask some, answer some of the other questions, sorry. Yeah, OK. Sorry. No, yeah, I'm done. OK. <laughs> um, I, I mean, mean we, we've, we've, seen, we're, we've seen there are ways in which that, that um, gap gets narrowed in communism that doesn't work particularly well. So so.